So I thought I'd seen it all when it comes to bike power meters, but apparently not. That's because one of the power meters I have on this bike tests really well when I'm pedaling, but it's inaccurate when I'm not pedaling. Oh yes, welcome to another rabbit hole. But before we get to all the details, keep an eye on these numbers as I coast down this gravel road. So welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to my look into the data coming from the Four Eyes Precision 3 Plus GRX single sided power meter, where things are great until they're not. Now this is not the first time I've looked into data coming from the Precision 3 sensor, but it is the first time I've really put their automatic terrain selecting function to the test. Now a quick timeline rundown of the Precision 3 sensor. In March 2022, the sensor was released and the performance was, well, not that great to be honest. It really wasn't even up to the spec of their previous generation power meters, the Precision 2. Now a year later, or just over a year later, May 2023, I reviewed firmware version 1.2.0, which was much better. Brought it up to the same spec as their previous power meter. Now in version 1.2.0, they had the automatic terrain selector functionality, which is notable because this means the power meter should be excellent off-road. And that's why this power meter had my attention. I've been spending a lot of time off-road on the gravel bike in recent times. In August 2023, Four Eyes released Apple Find My Network support, effectively making their power meter perform just like an AirTag. Quite a unique feature that remains the only power meter to have this to date. And in February 2024, Four Eyes officially released their Shimano Rode dual-sided Precision 3 Plus Pro power meter. The results I've had with that have been interesting to summarize it, and you'll see a little bit of that in this review later on. So there is some history here, the short of it being the Precision 3 sensor isn't a new product and it's used across multiple crank types from Four Eyes. It's pretty good until it's not. And we'll get to why in just a few moments. Firstly, a quick tech spec overview of the meter that I've been running on the gravel bike, the GRX non-drive side, so crank-based power meter. Ant Plus Bluetooth CR2032 battery with up to 800 hours of battery life, which is phenomenal. Power measurement left only, which has doubled. It will also give you cadence. Power accuracy claimed plus or minus 1%. All the power from zero to 4,000 watts. I can't test that. All the cadence is measured from 30 through to 170 with no frame magnet required. It uses accelerometers, so it's just bolt this on and away you go. Active temperature compensation, IPX7 waterproofing, firmware upgradable and configurable via their app. Four eyes claim a weight of only nine grams added to the crank in your bike overall running this power meter, so it weighs next to nothing. There is a profile cost though, so it does stick out 5.5 millimeters from the crank arm, and this can cause some trouble with newer bikes. We'll see why in a moment. Warranty, three years, and the additional section there, Apple Find My Network compatible, so it acts as an air tag, and terrain sensing mode. The price of this particular crank that I've been using, the FCRX8100 in USD comes in at $389.99. There's also a factory install option where you can send in your crank, they put the sensor on for a little bit less. When it comes to installation, it's relatively easy to install with the right tools, but not as easy as a set of power meter pedals, which of course anybody could install. Looping back to that 5.5 mil side profile of this power meter, and these won't be compatible with all frames. And this is an increasing problem on modern gravel frames with wide chain stays to accommodate wider tires. This meter just scrapes in on my Yolio G21 frame. It's technically a no-go with only about a millimeter of clearance, but it worked for the purpose of these test rides and it didn't scrape the frame. So while riding with this power meter, I was noticing every now and then some data popping up on the screen when it really shouldn't be. Now, how did I know it really shouldn't have been popping up? Well, firstly, I wasn't pedaling, and secondly, the upper power meter wasn't reporting this data. What was the other power meter? Let's get to why I'm using the Pro MX as the comparative power source. Now, Favero have a proven track record over many years being extremely reliable and providing some really, really good baseline data for both power and cadence. The dual sensing Pro MX2 can be broken apart or unlinked and converted to the MX1 single sided power meter, meaning I can compare power from the left pedal only to the left crank only with this setup. And the Pro MX is designed for equivalent off road riding, that being mountain bike, gravel, just like the GRX power meter. So it's an obvious choice as the comparative meter to use for this testing. And another quick fact is that I have over 800 comparative data sets since April 2018 using Favero pedals. They've been my go-to source for this work over the last six years. 
Okay, and with that, let's dive deep down to the rabbit hole of data analysis using the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple sources of power and cadence as an overlay and see how they stack up. Starting off here with an indoor Llama lab test using the Asioma Pro MX1 single-sided left up against the Four Eyes P3 Plus GRX non-drive side. And things looking pretty good indoors after a warm up, stop, zero. Let's have a look at the steady state section here, 219, 218.78. All looking pretty good, one for one. Back to one second smoothing and diving into this sprint. Things are looking absolutely fabulous there. Almost pedal stroke for pedal stroke. So early on, things are looking great. Okay, after that hard sprint into the overs and unders and then returning to a 200 watt steady state in ERG. Things were close, but something had changed. 140.5 versus 135.5. There was a slight offset change from one of these meters. Which one? Well, I stopped and zeroed just the four eyes meter and things came back into line with both meters, indicating a slight shift there after that maximal sprint on the four eyes. So 126, uh, 125. Again, back into line. Something I'll probably loop back on and dive into a little bit deeper to see if those hard sprints were changing the offset. But after zeroing, everything's coming back into line. Now the four eyes do not have an auto zero and pedal power meters can't zero themselves or auto zero while you're clipped in. There's no back pedal uh, auto magic zero like we see on the quark meters and things like that. Cadence wise, things lining up pretty well here for the steady state in erg, overs and unders, and everything else looking just fine for cadence. So a quick overview from that Llama lab test with the GRX power meter up against the MX1. Steady state, good. Sprints, good. Something strange happened after the sprint, but re-zeroing, everything came back into line, and cadence is also one for one. I'd call that excellent. But that's indoors. This thing's designed for outdoor use, especially with that terrain selector. Let's jump down that rabbit hole now. Starting off here with a gravel ride on August 7th, just the other day. 137 versus 134. So overall, things are looking pretty close. This is the P3 GRX up against the Asium Pro MX1. Uh, let me select just a chunk of data here. 176, 175, and just throwing my eye across that. Everything's looking pretty good. But it's this center section here that really caught my eye. You can see there's a lot more blue than purple through here, which is throwing those numbers out a little. So 109.43 versus 100. But where their two power meters are recording, things are pretty close. So that's the anomaly I was seeing. As I was riding along, in some instances, one power meter, the four eyes, was reporting something, and the other power meter wasn't. Moving a little further down the road into a small sprint here. Let's grab this data through here. Again, the sprints, uh, there we go. Uh, excellent. So when in use, this thing is fine. What do we have here for peak power? 1185, 1171. That is super, super close with this sprint effort here. A little further down the road with some steady state as I was leading Von out for a KOM. Uh, 201 versus 203. Very jagged there. I'm using one second smoothing. But again, when in rotation, things are looking fine on a relatively rough road. So again, accurate while riding, but unfortunately not accurate when I wasn't pedaling. So looping back to these sections through here where there's a lot more blue than there is purple. And what we're seeing here is the four eyes reporting power when I'm not even pedaling. Yes, that's me coasting there as you saw in the intro and the four eyes just jumping around with some power numbers. Pulling up the cadence section of that outdoor ride to dive a little bit deeper into what might be happening. And through here, you can see cadence spikes where I wasn't pedaling. So putting the power down here, again, turning the cranks over, I've got some cadence from both power meters. And then when I stop pedaling, the four eyes is reporting 22, uh, 62, 76, 57. Now the Asiomas are also reporting just a small amount of cadence. Look, there's one right there, but that's not enough for it to record cadence to then record power and give me any fake power readings. But the four eyes is really, really struggling off-road on that rougher terrain. And to dive even deeper into this again, it only appears to be happening when the crank is at six o'clock and there is pressure on the pedals. If the crank is at 12 o'clock on the non-drive side, it appears to be okay. But for whatever reason, I seem to put my left leg down when I'm coasting down gravel descents, which is why this popped up as a problem quite early on for me in this testing. So, summary of outdoor riding with this power meter. Accurate when pedaling, accurate when sprinting, not accurate sometimes when coasting with your left leg down. On to data set number three to answer a question that I had, that being, was this the head unit that was the problem or was it the power meter? So for this test, I had two different types of head units connected to the same power meter. I had the Karoo 3 and the, uh, this is the Edge 1050, I believe, so a Garmin unit. So the Edge up against the Karoo, 
connected to the same power meter, coasting down a rougher descent, and they were both reporting power. So fake cadence, fake power from the four eyes meter at six o'clock, just a little bit differently though from each other. You can see the Garmin edge there is smoothing things out a little bit and recording a little bit more data, whereas the hammerhead is just spiking that data. Either way, they're both wrong. I wasn't pedaling down that descent. Alrighty, the last data set we'll look at today, data set number four, answers another question that I had, that if I was seeing the problem with the GRX power meter for the Precision 3, did the road power meter based on the same technology and same sensor have the same problem? And the answer is, yes it does. However, on road, you're rarely descending on really, really rough terrain where this will kick in, but here we go. Straight into the data here, we have the Rally RS 200s up against the Four Eyes P3 Pro Plus, I think this is, which is the 9200 Joule, and you can see just through here, we're getting power reported where I wasn't pedaling. Scrolling down to the cadence and further confirmation of that, yes, it is having cadence spikes here and here. On that very small section of on-road riding where it was a little bumpy. Okay, so crawling ourselves out of that rabbit hole, back to the surface and a summary of where things are at with this small issue, as I see it with this power meter. Now, I did report this back to Four Eyes on February 21st, 2024, just after the Pro MXs had been released by Favero, so I could start openly sharing data from that meter as well. And after six months, I hadn't heard anything back. So just the other day, I prompted them again and I got an email back this morning asking what firmware version I was running. So I guess the wheels are slowly turning on this one. Now, I guess in the summary is that the Precision 3 off-road while riding appears to be accurate. Sprints are great, steady state's great, until it's not. And that's when you're not pedaling. Something I'm really surprised at, given this has a separate mode, especially for off-road rough riding. I really hope it's something they can look into and fix in firmware and call it a day. Because crank-based options for GRX power meters are very, very few and far between, especially now stages no longer exists. And a side note on this one, I think this would be a really easy win for Shimano to put their left side sensor on a GRX crank and call it done. Now, if your eye twitching about Shimano power meters being accurate or inaccurate, the left-hand side is fine. It tests really, really well. The issue Shimano have is with their right-hand side power meters. Although clearance issues do come into play, especially with those wider chainstay frames that are coming out. All the more reason for Shimano to purchase or acquire SRM or power to max and just make everyone happy. We can only dream. In the meantime, probably best off just get yourself some power meter pedals that are proven and do work. Okay, so there's my take and some interesting observations on the Four Eyes Precision 3 Plus power meter, specifically designed for gravel riding. Accurate when pedaling, sometimes not that accurate when you're not pedaling. Whew, alrighty. What's the next rabbit hole these power meters are gonna send me down? Stay tuned for that one. And as always, thumbs ups, subscribes, and we'll do it all again soon. Thanks for watching.